So I know you're going to be happy about this. We're going to look into some quadratic models, in other words, quadratic word problems. Um, some of these will be set up for you. Some of these you'll have to generate the formulas yourself, which is where you'll probably have the most problems. But in this problem, we'll start off with a formula that's already been generated. So we've got an object being launched at 19.6 meters per second from a 58.8 meter tall building. And the equation's height is going to be given to you in, an, in a function here. So S represents the height at any given time T. And we want to know when does the object strike the ground. So let's just think about this. If you shoot an object from 58 feet off the ground, travels in a parabolic fashion, and then comes back down. So what we're looking for is we're going to look for when the y value is equal to zero, or when s of t equals zero. Now, we can do this algebraically with the quadratic formula, but for problems like this, we will probably let you use the calculator to do that. So what we're going to do is fire up that calculator. Let's pop in an equation. And if we take and now graph this in the standard window, so I'll hit zoom 6 to be standard, you'll notice that upon graphing, I can see that the high point is up here and it's going to hit the ground right in this area here. Now if I want to find out where that is, I can find out where it intersects the line y equals zero. So I'm going to go back and graph y equals zero as well. And then I'm going to calculate an intersection. So I'll go second, calculate, and hit five for intersect. And then use my cursor to get the blinky guy down by my intersection, which is somewhere close to this point here. So I'll hit enter three times, and turns out at six, at six seconds, it hits the ground. We could also use a quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a to find out where that value is equal to zero. But this is a little bit quicker. So here's our next problem. You've got two rectangular corrals being made from 100 yards of fencing. And if the rancher wants a total, uh, wants the total area to be maximized, what dimensions should it be? So all the way around and all the fence uses 100 yards of total fence. All right. And we're talking about area. So we're going to have to have some length times with calculations. So here's what I think I'll do. I'll take and call these side guys X, which means I have three of them. And the long one from here to here, Y. And then I know that my area is just my length times my width, or X times Y. But I know the amount of fencing used is really what's known as the perimeter. But we've got this middle section too, so we'll say our perimeter if you will, or the amount of fence used is three X's and two Y's. But we also know that the amount of fence used was 100 feet. And we're going to try to maximize the area. So now what I'm going to need to do is graph X, Y, but I can't use two variables. I'm going to need one variable. And I'll probably do it in terms of X. Now notice I have an equation here that I can make a substitution for. I just have to solve for y. So I'm going to start with my 100 equals 3x plus 2y. Solve for y. So I've got 100 minus 3x over 2 is equal to y. If I know that's true, then I can say my area is equal to x times 100 minus 3x over 2. And I can leave it like that. That's fine. And what I'm going to try to do is maximize this. So I'm going again to take a calculator. And you'll notice if I were to distribute that through, I've got 100 
x minus 3x squared. And there's our quadratic. So that's going to create a parabola looking something like this. We're going to find our maximum here. So now we've got to go to our calculator and plug that in. So let's do that. So here we are. What I've done is I've plugged in 0.5 or the half times 100 minus 3x squared. I went to this foil, or distributed out equation. And now I'm going to graph that in the standard window. And I notice I don't really see much of anything. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for this maximum. I don't see where it comes down or anything. So I'm, I'm going to look at my equation and say, well, hey, I noticed that I don't want a negative value at all. And if I had an x value that were over 33, that would be a bad thing. So I'm going to change my x's to go all the way out to 40 just so I've got some screen to work with. And then I'm guessing my area is going to be pretty high. So I'll go back and adjust my window, and I'll say instead of going from negative 10 to 10, I'm going to go from negative 10 to, let's call it 40. And then I'll go pretty high on my area. I'll just say, uh, let's go random 2,000, see what happens. And hit graph. Okay, so you'll notice I see the entire parabola, and I see a maximum. I probably went too high with the 2,000, but I'm looking for this maximum value of area here. So I'll go second, calculate, my maximum value. I'll move the cursor to the left of the high point, which is pretty much already at. Move it to the right of the high point. Hit enter again. And a third time. And you'll notice what I have is roughly 16 and two-thirds for my x value and 416 and two-thirds for my area. So what I have is I have an x value of 16 and 2 thirds, and then 400 and 16 and 2 thirds square yards for the area. They asked me for the dimensions, so that's 16 and 2 thirds for the x, and if I want the y, I just have to plug that back in to this equation here. So what I have is I have 100 minus, that's uh, what, 50 thirds, 3 times 50 over 3 over 2, and that gets me my y value. So I have 100 minus 50 over 2, or 25 for my y value. And those are my dimensions that give me a maximum area. Move to the next problem. All right, so again, they give us a formula here, and it's a value formula for a set of stocks. So the stock's going to model a quadratic that goes down, and they want to know how much money did the person start with. Well, when you're starting something, you're starting at time zero. So if I want to know how much she started with, I take V of zero, so it's a value at zero. And we can see that if you plug a zero into every T, you're going to get 50. So it was $50, or it's in hundreds, so 50 hundreds would be $5,000, right? And then we want to know how much will she have when it's a maximum. So again, I want to find the maximum value of this. I could calculate this a couple of different ways. I could go negative B over 2A like we did a couple of days ago. But probably for these, I will have you use a calculator once again. Um, and if I wanted to do that, then I'll just pop that into the calculator. So let's go ahead and do that. So once again, here's the formula. We'll graph it in a standard window. And we look, and again, we have an issue where we don't see the maximum. And it kind of makes sense because we know at time zero this is going to start at 50, so it's way up here. The maximum should be a lot higher, and we don't know how long it's going to take to reach that. So we're going to move our window over to the right and up quite a bit. Let's go window over to, say, 100 months. I don't know if that's even close, but we'll try it. And then let's move our value up to let's say 200 just for kicks see what happens 
So here's the graph. It didn't take quite a hundred months before it lost everything, but the value is much, much higher. So we're going to have to move up much higher again. And I'm going to bring in my X window a little bit. We'll go half of that. So we'll go 50. And I'm going to go, just so I see everything, I'm going to go to 1,000. Hit Enter. So you'll notice I see my entire curve. We want to find this maximum value. So again, second, calculate maximum. Move over. Whoops. Going to have to do this again. Go second, calculate maximum. That's my left bound. I'm going to move over to the other side, get my right bound, guess that out. And it turns out after 12. 0.16 months, we make uh, 494, and that's in hundreds amount of dollars. So we have a max of 494. That's in hundreds. So that's really $49,000. And that's going to happen after. 12 point, let's go back, 12.16 months. Okay. All right, so here's a situation where we're going to have to derive this problem. It says you've got a canoe rental business. You currently charge $12 and average 36 rentals. So we can get a total dollar value out of that. And an industry journal says that for every 50 cents you raise in rental fees, the average business you're going to lose is about two rentals a day. And then we want to find what's the maximum I can charge to make the most money. All right. So let's look at profit. First of all, the profit would be $12 times your 36. So this is what you're making now. And then it said new profit or profit equation in terms of X says that whatever is going to happen, all right, if I raise 50 cents, so if I go up by 50 cents for every increment of that, Every time I go up an increment of 50 cents, I'm going to lose two times for every increment or two of the number of people. So that means from those 36 rentals, I'm going to lose two for every X that I raise. So this is my new equation. All right. Um, in this case, we want to find what the maximum we can earn is. Okay, and right now we're in whatever 12 times 36 is. So again, I'm going to plug this into my calculator. So here's my formula showing that if I go up an increment of 50 cents, then 2 will be subtracted for every increment of 56, or for every increment of 50 cents from the 36 people. So now I'm going to graph that, once again, in the standard window. And you'll notice the standard window doesn't work out very well a lot of the time. So we've got to think, okay, what the heck's going to happen here? Nothing shows up in the window. I know I don't want negative numbers, and I have this 36 minus 2x in the problem, so that limits my domain. If I look out to 20 for the window, I'm probably good to go. So I'm going to go out to 20 for x. And then the profit, well, right now I have 12 times 36, so it's probably somewhere around 400 bucks. Let's look up at 500 and see where we go from there. So let's go to 500 and graph it. So you'll notice here's my graph. And we notice something kind of interesting. At zero, where if I don't increase at all, I'm not making my maximum value. In fact, if I increase my charge 
I'm going to continue to lose more and more money. It looks like by this graph, my maximum can actually be obtained by cutting costs. So I'll make more money if I charge less. More people will want to ride that boat. So let's find this maximum. We'll calculate our maximum once again. And we'll move over to the right. So we'll let me get over there. So there we go. Hit enter. Move over this side. Hit enter again. And it turns out I get a maximum value of $441 when I take three increments of 50 cents off. So in this case, I make 441 max if I take three by 50 cents off. So what I should really be charging instead of 12 bucks is I should be charging 10.50. To make that maximum value because right now I'm only making 432 bucks off that rental so go ahead fill out the summary and go to my math lab and do the questions for lesson 11